scholarships through uh, New Jersey manufacturers and um, they're very generous scholarships to uh, some of our top students so uh, two of our students are here uh, this afternoon um, this year's class was our largest graduating class and the students who are here tonight uh, represent um, some of the top students in that class so um, I'm going to ask them to come up we have uh, Hamed uh, Faruqi Ahmed is from uh, Ake Harbor Township. He was in our Information Technology Academy. He is going on to uh, Stockton University. He's majoring in computer science and uh, pre-med. Awesome. Welcome. Congratulations. Hand that to you. You stay up here. And also with us, uh, we have Daniela Luque Sanchez. Um, uh, Daniela is from Pleasantville. Um, she is uh, actually was in the top 10 of the graduating class of 354 students. And uh, she was a health sciences major at ACIT. She's going to uh, continue her education at Atlantic Cape Community College and she will be a biomedical engineering student. Awesome. Yeah, Ariana uh, did not make it. Uh, I, Ariana Ramirez, um, another one of our top students uh, from Atlantic City. Um, she was a cosmetology uh, student with us, did extraordinarily well, and is continuing her education at Stockton University. And as most of the students do with cosmetology, they uh, actually cut the hair uh, to pay their way through college. Uh, so she will, I'm sure, continue in that path, and uh, she'll do great at Stockton University. That's great. Congratulations to Ariana as well. Um, do, it, do we have anybody from NJM? Do you want to uh, come on up and, and say a few words as well? Yeah. Um, I'm Christy Burke. I'm the Human Resources Business Partner for the NJM Hamilton office. So we're a um, big supporter of Atlantic County. We have our second largest facility in Hamilton. 
Um, and it's a core value of NJM to be able to give back to the communities that we're privileged to serve. So I wish you all the best. I congratulate you on your accomplishments and your future's very bright. Well, we appreciate you as a corporate partner and citizen in our community and in our county. So thank you for what you do uh, with this endeavor, but with certainly a, a lot of other endeavors that, that you do in the community. So thank you to NJM. And I also want to thank um, John Zanadio is from NJAC. He was on his way down, but I guess he forgot that we live in a shore town and uh, it's 4th of July weekend and it was in bumper to bumper traffic. So he was definitely not going to make it. Um, down from North Jersey, but uh, he sent his regards and his congratulations to you all as well. So again, good luck. We look forward to wonderful things from you in the future and uh, to having you contribute to our county in the next couple of years after you uh, get your education. It's great. Thank awesome. You. Congrats. Let's hear it for you. Now. And we'll get, a, we'll get the official photo. There we go. By the way, your official checks are in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, guys. Congrats again. And don't feel like you have to stay for the meeting if you don't want to. Okay. Thank you. And thank you. Appreciate it. All right. I'll walk you guys out. Have a great weekend. See you later. Thank you guys again. Sneaky way out. Exit. All right, next up, um, we have from the Ideal Institute of Technology, Mr. Rod Green. He's the Director of Strategic Initiatives and Partnership Development. Uh, we had resolution number 378 on today's agenda with regard to the Ideal Institute. And uh, Rod and his team have been doing really incredible work, um, namely in the Hamilton Mall. Uh, they have several spaces that they're doing with. Um, the Ideal Institute and um, the kids that are involved and the graduates. So um, I had asked Rod to come and just talk about his program. It's really incredible. I think it's a kind of a hidden gem that not a lot of people know about in conjunction with our Workforce Development Board. So Rod, do you want to come up and just um, briefly share with us some... Is it okay if I had Absolutely. Sure. You may approach the bench. Uh -huh. Just get seat for service clerics. <laughs> Again, thank you so much, uh, uh, Chairwoman Gatta, for the for the invite, and thank you, uh, obviously, distinguished uh, freeholders uh, of Atlanta County. I've been um, blessed to be an Atlanta County resident since 2001. My father was in the military, so every three years, new country, new state, and this was the first state in, in town, city, county, if you will, that I decided to plant my set my flag in. I uh, started um, working at the Hamilton Mall. I had an undergraduate degree in criminal justice, and I was pursuing. Uh, the entertainment business, and this is supposed to be a, a short stay. Uh, but uh, after these years since uh, 2001, I'm still here. I had the opportunity from the Hamilton Mall to actually go the alternate route uh, in education at Oak Crest, uh, and I taught at Duberson, and I uh, had a great, great time there. I actually ran into an old colleague, Officer Hausman, downstairs. I hadn't seen him since he was uh, riding the boats and, and uh, school resource officer. But nonetheless, um, just it, it's a joy to, to be a part of. Um, Ideal Institute of Technology as a, uh, a executive, but also as a partner in the brand as a, as a whole. What you're looking at is actually our first graduating class uh, of young men and young ladies from Atlanta County. And we've been uh, fortunate, uh, thanks to uh, Atlanta County Board of Chosen Free Will, the Work Workforce Development Board, and working with uh, Ms. Laurie and, and that great team over there at Pleasantville One Stop to uh, facilitate the out of school youth program that we um, have sort of rebranded as ideal first step of careers so that we felt, and, uh, and so as well as the older youth that were 21 and 23 with children at times, that they weren't youth and they were they had very adult responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, nonetheless, um, we we really take pride in um, having gone down this, this road with them uh, over this, this particular past year, but for the last few years as a whole. This was a turning point for us, I believe, this year, um, in so much that we, experienced the most success in terms of how many youth we actually serviced. We serviced about 70 youth uh, this this uh, this year. 
uh, and we were able to um, go through those ebbs and flows, if you will, of their life uh, as they basically um, went through tumultuous times that they unfortunately had to experience maybe, maybe based off of uh, the neighborhood that they lived in, uh, circumstances that were out of their control, and then sometimes uh, decisions that they made. But meeting them where they were and where they are continues to be our mantra um, because in doing so, um, and them not having maybe success at their traditional high school uh, or having coming out of incarcerated situations um, with, through the JJC, um, we're, we're able to basically say, hey, look, uh, our, our greatest skill or greatest thought that we can convey to you is, is investing in yourself. Um, and that belief basically will stem uh, unbelievable individual success and cause you to, to soar, but also that can cause your family to experience success as well. Um, that being said, I'm just, just delighted, again, uh, just to speak before you for the first time, to talk about our program in general. Um, we go beyond, uh, you know, the, the measures of, 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 of the award because we recognize that sometimes there's barriers that, that are just not covered. And so when we see that we go that extra mile uh, for those youth, we see that they, they put out, they, they perform, um, and they go the extra mile. Uh, one story I'll share. Uh, young man that's in the book, his name is Khalil. Um, on Wednesday, uh, prior to the Pleasantville graduation, uh, by the way, there was about six uh, particular youth that uh, were unable to complete their conventional pathway uh, at Pleasantville High School. And they came to us in December of 2018. And Khalil particularly, uh, just again, you know, trying to see uh, where he fit in, seeing uh, what the uh, opportunity really would be for him and if it was real and if it was going to go away. Um, but nonetheless, our consistency showed him that we were willing to go the long uh, haul, go to, go to distance with them essentially. The Wednesday prior to uh, the final day for him to be able to walk with their class, uh, Khalil did not pass his final portion of math for the high school equivalent. But in his mind, in, in, his, in his open uh, affirmation, that he was going to walk with his class. And he pleaded with us to go back to the one stop and see if they could get uh, him to be able to take the test again. We were able to do that successfully. He came in on that Friday morning with the head of STEAM, having talked with the instructor the night prior, did some, uh, some burn, some, some, some uh, midnight oil, if you will. And he was able to pass that Friday morning. And his mother, who had been on a 12 year plus journey through, uh, obviously, the early head start all the way through, celebrated. Uh, two graduations. He graduated with us on June 14th, and then he graduated the following Tuesday with Pleasantville High School with his class. And for us, again, that that is the success. Looking at those uh, mount those mountains, essentially that those individuals and youth face and turn them into milestones. So, thank you again for the opportunity just to share a little story and also uh, the visionary work that my partner started, Ren Parif. Uh, some uh, years ago in, in uh, early four, in 14 and for the last few years uh, and, and moving forward this fourth year and being one of the uh, facilitators of the out school youth grant offered by the Workforce Development Board of Atlanta County. And thank you again. Rob, can you just talk quickly about how you use the graduates and students in the businesses that you Absolutely. created? Just real quick. On the back of the um, book that I, I, I um, that students designed, by the way, um, are our student enterprises. Education, training, and workforce development all go hand in hand. It's not enough just to educate and train them. They must become employable and then be employed. And so we started Student Enterprises. We started with Ideal Tech Center. Then we moved on to uh, Ideal Studio, uh, which is located in Hamilton Mall. And as of May 23rd of last uh, of this year, we opened Ideal VR Lab. It's a complete, South Jersey's first complete virtual reality uh, game experience. But everything has a learning component, so we teach we, we, we do what we teach, and students earn while they learn. And that's, that's our mantra. And so in saying as much, students actually get the opportunity while they're actually enrolled, as well as after, to become gainfully employed within our student enterprises. It's really awesome. Uh, if you have a chance, go stop by and check out. Uh, you have four locations now, yes. or three? three we, have, uh, we have four total. Yeah. We just got our building permit uh, yeah. uh, for our corporate offices. We're moving from AppSeekin. Uh, and then we're turning our seeking location into a what we're calling an ideal builders and ideal appliance repair, which are also student enterprises. And, and essentially, that, that's the course that we're going to continue to what we call making South Jersey the next Silicon Valley yeah. uh, and really making that imprint. Great. Thank you. So, yeah, please take your kids.
for something to do this summer on maybe a rainy day, virtual reality lab in the mall studio. There's so much activity you can do to support this enterprise as well. So check it out. And uh, Rod also helped put together the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame event uh, recently. Did a great job with that as well. Um, man of many hats so and many talents. So appreciate thank you so much, Rod. Thank you all. Appreciate thank you coming. Thank you. And don't feel like you have to stay. <coughs> Can I walk you out? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got the students on the way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I had a note, Howard, that you may or may not have shown up apparently there's a lot happening that you want to tell us about with aviation. Sorry, Mark, so. I, I know you have a long schedule, so I want to be brief. Okay. I had to ask by several people, I had to get the first one, have a successfully constructed schedule. Where are we going from here? What's next? But we are planning a second building. That's actually in the way we're talking with various contractors to look at design build and so forth, and how we do financing with that. But also, the main thing I want to stress is that when you look at this project, we've got to now conceptualize it a little differently. We tend to conceptualize it as a building in a research park. But what we are really doing is we're developing an aviation innovation hub, and that's how it's recognized in the state plan. I just want to back up a little bit. I know the county executive gives me a lot of credit for moving this, but this whole innovation hub, the building and so forth, largely did not have an advance was for his efforts and putting his muscle behind it, putting his support behind it. And we just wouldn't have gotten nearly as far as we have on this and helping form the ACDA and so forth. But just getting back to what we're doing now, the innovation hub. Are you familiar with the term? Have you heard me talk about it before? It consists of the airport, which is now designated as a smart airport test bed facility, the FAA test center, and the research park. Right? The main thing we can look at with the research park is it now beginning to do the work of a research park. It's a project underway with NJIT, NJII, to do an innovation challenge with Lockheed. The innovation challenge focuses industry attention on a problem, in this particular case, in industry and academic attention on a problem, in this case, from the aviation industry. What they're working on is an innovation challenge to address issues concerning the Cybersecurity to the aviation blockchain. I know it's technical, but that's what the research park does. That's technical work. Also, another little bit of good news that's related to the park and the research aspects of the park is four to four while ago we received a new reply for US EDA grant, I6 challenge grant. We're one of the finalists by now. We get that grant, but we will have a $1.6 million grant specifically intended to accelerate smart airport technology using the aviation park. And the airport in the United City, the United City Air National Airport. Breaking news. Well, we haven't gotten it yet, but we really, <laughs> really we'll be disappointed if we don't, let's put it right. that way, because they really told us we're the finalists that we're up okay. to. And as a result of that, we're working with an organization called the National Institute of Aerospace. I keep stressing, you need validation that what we are doing is credible. NIA, which works with NASA, NASA and works with the FAA intensely in Washington and elsewhere would not have asked Atlantic County to partner on this grant application with them if we did through the ACPA. So that's you know, an indication of a work we're on to something. The other thing, Smart Airport Innovation Hub consists of air cargo and also maintenance repair operations. Lots happening with air cargo will be coming back to free on the board with that project of working with SJTA to open up 300 acres that are at the airport right now that can't be used because Believe it or not, they are a bird sanctuary. It's not really a thriving bird sanctuary being at an airport, but it's a bird sanctuary there. So working with them, uh, we hope to relocate that bird sanctuary over 300 acres of air cargo because we're getting interest in air cargo. Other area where we're clearly getting interest at in the master plan by Angelo Economics is maintenance repair operations. We have, we are in negotiations, and we'll be coming to the board with this probably in a couple of weeks, in negotiations with the company that wants to establish maintenance repair operations there. Uh, we're a little bit in the running. We are, we are at the top of their list right now. They're also looking at places, uh, Winston Salem, North Carolina, I believe, uh, Pittsburgh Airport, Stewart Airport, and uh, one more that escapes me. But we're looking at some competitive places, but they like the energy they see here, they like the opportunity that ACY presents in terms of low cost of operations, it needs to get in and out of there. And the problem is that they need a hangar, because that's what we're trying to work with them on. But very promising, <coughs> what the fellow said, who's in charge of this company, is that if you proceed 
with building an aviation maintenance academy, especially if you can be successful in getting Embry Riddle University to operate that academy, then you will fill up your maintenance operation opportunities here. You'll completely fill them up because there's such an incredible demand for aviation mechanics that you can guarantee a company that you can provide a steady stream of qualified workers in a location such as ACY, they will come here. So that's another project. We'll be back to the board with that. Uh, those are the main thing I want to talk about. Oh, yeah, on the Aegis Academy, we are in the process now of working with US EPA to get a grant and to fund a good portion of that academy. Then there's a meeting set up next week on that with uh, people at the US EPA, and we begin that process. So as you can see, things are moving. Collective support, freeholder support, county executive support, and, and critical. And it's sort of validation, again, of what we're doing. I just got this today. Everyone here heard of Triad Associates, a very respected, yes, very respected uh, consulting firm. They sent out their marketing email. Probably 5,000 people get it, a lot of higher level people in the state get it. And here's the top thing that they're promoting Atlantic County is becoming an aviation powerhouse. Okay? So we're all to something good. A lot more work has to be done. I'm not going to say the path forward is easy. It's actually getting harder. But I think we're in a very good place. Any questions? I, thank you, Howard. I just want to say um, thank you for keeping us up to date and um, not and being unrelenting. And we've cut the ribbon and everybody you know, celebrates and sometimes walks away. And I, I appreciate the county administration is keeping up you know, the diligence even through these summer months. So um, thanks for that. And thanks for keeping us up to date on that as well. Karen, you had a question. I do. Sure. Um, this is this is wonderful, but I won I wonder and not but and I wonder is it exclu mutually exclusive of passenger air service? Can no. we only have one or the no. other? No, uh, I'll tell you what. We have an agreement and our relationship with the SJTA is very good. We have an agreement with the SJTA. We're not going to get involved in the air passenger side because that is a specialty. Right. We're involved in the economic development side. So air cargo, mm -hmm. excuse, passenger transportation remains a major priority of the SJTA. And the company that we're bringing in, the MROs, let me just mention that. They are a very high-end charter, specialty charter service. What they want to do with the planes and downtime, this is a second tier project, is they want to start using them for air service to targeted destinations. <laughs> so that's one way of getting air service in here. But ultimately, when all the pieces start coming together, <coughs> Start encouraging air service. If you're getting <coughs> repair operations, air cargo operations, all airport test technology recognized by universities and so forth, uh, then you get. Also, what I'd like to stress, and the final thought I'll leave you with, is where were we three years ago? Uh, we were basically recovering from the fiasco with SJEDD in the park. We had the highest foreclosure rates in the country, high unemployment rates, uh, the highest unemployment rate, population dwindling. And people just saying, hey, it's time to maybe uh, do something else. That's when the county executive stepped forward and said, let's start on this area. In three years, by doing the Angelos plan, forming the ACA, and, and now we have a product. And we have to we can now go, you could, who would want to come to Atlanta County prior to that? What would be the reason to locate an, a business here or some of your operations here in an area that economically is challenged? And even with some of the workforce issues. But now you can go to a company and you can say, if you're involved in the aviation field, and especially if you can benefit from close proximity to the FAA, tech center, if uh, we can provide you a state-of-the-art building, we can provide you with academic research support from some of the top universities in the country. We can offer, well, we could up to they have to offer them some kind of incentive, and hopefully we will be able to constantly that because revenue is expired. <coughs> But we also lived in a federal opportunity zone. We can tie them in with the FAA. We can tie them into FAA computer systems, data systems, and FAA subject matter experts. We can introduce them to opportunities at the joint base, the Wireport, Dix, Lakehurst. And we can also tie them in and introduce them to opportunities at Cape May Airport, where they do UAS work with Delaware River Bay Authority. We couldn't offer any of that. But now we have something to offer. So we're in a much better place and you know, ready to move forward. Yeah, very good, Howard. Given the importance of the relationship with the research park and SJTA, has there been any discussion with the possibility 
of the New York Port Authority taking over the airport and letting them know what we're doing or interfacing with it. Yes. As soon as that became known that the Port Authority was considering, I was instructed by the county executive to go up to the Port Authority with more and more. We both went up there and we arranged a meeting and we both kept an tour. And our concern was this. The Port Authority taking over the airport could be a very positive thing. If they come in with muscle and they come in with some enthusiasm, it can be a good thing. What we were concerned about is that we have been working very aggressively with SJTA on a lot of projects such as the air cargo, clearing 300 acres, uh, the maintenance academy, so we are going to be on uh, SJTA land. We didn't want the Port Authority to come in and build all that up. When we met with Kevin O'Toole, it was like he thought this was going to be a routine meeting, he had a whole calendar of people and a group of people outside waiting to come in. But when we went through this, when we actually said to him, here's what we're working on. And we mentioned to him that Embry Riddle was a partner with us in designing the feasibility plan for the Aviation Maintenance Academy that we're looking into. He sat up in his chair. He said the exact word, well, that would be great. So we let it be known that we have things here that can really benefit the Port Authority. And if they do move in that direction, we need to be at the table with them from the early stages. In fact, I just heard that Sonia, we got some information on that too. For our next meeting, we'll have a resolution um, uh, to uh, talk about whether we want to support the study of, of that, you know, that potential coming here or not. So. I just believe it's important for us to proactively let them know what their pitfalls would be if they took a passive approach to this. Okay. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank my friends in the county keep coming in and asking for something. Yeah. Really try and help. All right. Thanks, Howard. Thank you. All right. Going on with our printed agenda here, we'll start out with our ordinances. Number eight. An ordinance establishing no passing zones along Oak Road, County Group 681, in the Township of Buena Vista, Atlantic County, final reading. Move. Second. Motion is second on that final reading. Any free order comments or questions? This is a public hearing. We'll open it up to the public. Any public comments? Same then we'll close that. And we'll have a roll call Bennett? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Hearn? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. Number nine? Ordinance to vacate and abandon a site triangle easement across part of lots five and six in block 950.02 along 23 East Jimmy Lee Road in the township of Galloway, first reading. Move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Free order comments on that first reading. Okay. Um, seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Bennett? <coughs> yes. Cortino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. Okay, on the resolutions, number 367. Amended grant agreement to decrease funding from the New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development for the program year 2017, Work First New Jersey program net decreased $332,455. Mm -hmm. Motion and a second. I just want to make a comment. We have a lot of workforce development stuff on here, guys. That's all adjustments in uh, final budgets now that their fiscal year is closed and it's all based on participation rates. So that's what all this is. That's why. Any other freeholder comments on that one? Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, I'm going to support this resolution, but I'm in a little concerned that we could not find a way to use the three point four million dollars before it had to be recalculated. Okay. Uh, let me ask the question. We couldn't find ways to, to use that money? I think it's only yes. three hundred and thirty thousand. Yes. It's a reduction of the three thirty two. Yes. Yeah. So the new budget is the three four. And then just so you, you know it's for welfare clients and you have to put them in Work activities. If they if they cannot meet the work activity requirement, then you can't spend money. Right. So that's the issue. No, that's okay. Okay. Any other pre-order questions, comments, or the public? Okay. Motion and second. Bennett. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Formica. Yes. Kern. Yes. Risley. Yes. And Gatto. Yes. Three sixty-eight. Amended grant agreement with the New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development to decrease program year 2017 workforce learning link program grant funding net decrease $15,662. Mm -hmm. 
Grant application and acceptance from the New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development for the New Jersey Youth Corps Program in the amount of four hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Motion and a second. Three order comments. Comments from the public. Four vote. Bennett. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ramika. Yes. Kern. Yes. Risley. Yes. And Gatto. Yes. Three seventy. Grant application and acceptance recognizing individual struggles and experiences program grant funding from the New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development in the amount of fifty-four thousand dollars. Second. Motion and a second. Three order comments on that one. Comments from the public. Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Ms. Patrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 371. Grant application for the 2020 County Envir Environmental Health Act grant from the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Grant funding $273,000. In kind match $544,143. Second. Motion and a second. Bring over comments. Comments from the public. Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 372. Grant application to the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management, Federal Emergency Agency for Fiscal Year 19 Emergency Management Performance Grant Emergency Management Agency Assistance, Grant Funding $55,000, County In-Kind Match $61,794.32. Motion and second. Three order comments on that one. Comments from the public. Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. Take a motion for the chapter 159. 159s together? Mm -hmm. Motion and second. Three order comments on those. Comments from the public. Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 375. We know a competitive contract with America Works of New Jersey Incorporated to act as a one-stop operator amount not to exceed $75,141. Second. Motion is second. Builder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 376. Renewal competitive contracts with various providers for the provision of a Work First New Jersey to Work Activities Program amount not to exceed $1,222,107. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Do order comments on that one? Comments from the public? Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Bisley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 377. Renewal, co renewal competitive contracts with Greater Atlantic City Chamber of Commerce and Stockton University for the provision of a job placement retention program in the amount of $850,105. Move. Second. Motion and second. Bring over comments on that one. Comments from the public? Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Bisley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 378? We know the agreements with Stockton University and Ideal Institute of Technology for a Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act Out of School Youth Program in the amount of $780,742. Move. Second. Motion and second. Further comments on that one? Comments from the public? Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 379? Big contract with Thomas Company Inc. for a roof replacement at the Atlantic County Justice Facility amount not to exceed $1,798,807. So moved. Second. 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 Pre order comments on, on the roof. Yes. Pre order Risley. Just like to mention that uh, we had five bidders, and the lowest responsible bidder was someone from. Our county, so that's good question. And I'm sure the roof needed to work out there. I don't know when the last job was done. Any idea? No. It's the original no. yes. Probably a long, 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 long time ago. So it's probably well deserved. Good job. Thanks, Freeholder. Any other freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Bennett? Yes. Bertina? Yes. Corsi? 
Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Fern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gavin? Yes. 380? Bid contract with Delta Line Construction Company provides signalization at Tuckahoe Road and 11th Avenue in Weymouth Township, amount not to exceed $53,953.50. Move. Second. Motion to second. Fewer comments? I did hear I did hear a thumbs though from him. Yeah. Have you had a real He thinks anything wants to make landing center. Any comments from the public on that one? Okay, well I'll vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gavin? Yes. 381. Bid contract with Action Uniform Company, Limited Liability Corporation, to furnish and deliver uniforms to members of the Atlantic County Justice Facility, amount not to exceed $34,160. Second. Second. Fair order comments on that one. Comments from the public? Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertina? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatta? Yes. 382. Agreement with Crown Castle International to lease space on a communications tower along Hamburg Avenue in the city of Egg Harbor to support the county's 800 megahertz emergency response and public agency communication system amount not to exceed $46,531.88. Second. Motion and second. Free order comments. I'm hearing a lot of humming over here as well. It is a 12 year contract. I did want to point that out. Free order, can we get over here? Yes, and it's a 12 year contract, and uh, we have no alternative because there's no buildings there right. to fill our net. Right. So right. it's actually not as bad as it looks. Yeah. You know. Agreed. So just wanted to point that out. It's less than 40,000 here. Which I forget we pay on top of Brighton Towers. I think we pay forty thousand for that. So. And then that was reduced. That one's reduced because the uh, the contractor we were working with uh, was uh, not telling the uh, the what would be the board of the building what he was charging us. So we began negotiating directly with them. And so it happened. They gave us a much flat. I, 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 I remember that. I remember yes. That, yeah. Just so you know, I mean, this is part of. This fits right into, that's the other issue. You'd have to get another antenna someplace. This antenna fits right along with, you know, this is in Ake Harbor City, so when you go Galloway, Ake Harbor City, you go up down to the theater. And we just had them all sequenced in. I don't know if you if you remember, we came here to the court yeah. to, to, to explain that. Yep. Thank you. Any other pre-order comments? So let me just ask you this question, Madam Chair. Sure. So if, if this was not to pass, that automatic can take Hamilton out of it. I think I might have made the other towns in the west of it. But we don't want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just Hamilton. Uh, <laughs> no. All right. You know you don't run in Hamilton, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I did, I asked the same question. I'm not afraid to ask the question. <laughs> All right. Any other real <clears throat> comments? Substantive? Is that what you mean? Substantive. All right. Any comments from the public? None of his hand is coming. Like a whole. Call us from the public. Let Frank get you in trouble. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Goes Frank, yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatta? Yes. 383. Agreement with the Workforce Development Board for the provision of the South Jersey. Workforce Collaborative Regional Plan, no cost. Yes. 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 Motion and a second. Is there a freeholder comment there? Free order? No, ma'am. Oh. Any other freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 384. Amended Intergovernmental Service Agreement with the Rutgers State University of New Jersey for the provision of dental services for Atlantic County residents of the John H. Cronin Dental Center, net increase $10,500. Second. Motion a second. Free order comments. Comments from the public. Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 385. Alternate method contract with MTS Software Solutions Incorporated to provide maintenance service for the Fortis Imaging Proprietary Software Amount not to exceed twenty nine thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars. Mm -hmm. Question and second. Fair order comments on that. Comments from the public. 
Okavo. Bennett. Yes. Rotino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ramika. Yes. Kern. Yes. Grizzly. Yes. And Ghetto. Yes. 386. EUS contract with Glenn Insurance Incorporated to purchase a storage tank pollution liability with terrorism policy through Ironshore for the county's six underground storage tanks. Amount not to exceed seven thousand four hundred ninety-three dollars at twelve cents. Second. Motion and a second. Freeholder comments. Comments from the public. Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. yes. And I'm just going to pause us there for a second, guys, because I'm getting notes here. Um, our third student has arrived, and uh, she leverages our bus system, um, <laughs> and uh, was a little bit late because of that, and also has to catch another bus to get out of here timely, right? So I don't want to, I don't want to make you miss your bus, so I'm going to just stop for a minute, guys, and uh, present Ariana with her her uh, uh, achievement here. So, Phil, why don't you just sure. once again highlight this young lady for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Ariana Ramirez is a, a student from Atlantic City. Um, she was one of our cosmetology students, and I confirmed she was going to work part-time using those skills uh, during her time at um, Stockton University, uh, where she is going to major in education. So. Um, she, once again, one of our top students and, and has done extraordinarily well, and we're very proud of her. Thank you so much, Ariana. Congratulations to today with your official recognition. Your scholarship check is in there as well. So, yeah, so keep that protected on the way home, okay? Yeah, I will. Okay, good. All right. Well, let's take a, let's take a picture here. There we go. Okay. And we wish you nothing but success in the future, Ariana. Thank Thanks so for much. coming. Thank Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank let's let's secure one. Take care. Be careful getting home. Thanks, guys. She had a 705 bus to catch. All right, <clears throat> moving on, 387. Amended share service agreement between the Atlantic County Sheriff's Office, the County of Atlantic, and the Folsom Board of Education for Security Services within the Folsom School District, no additional cost. Move. Second. Second. Motion to second. Free over comments on that one. Comments? Yeah, this, yes. Yes, of course. Yeah. How is it that the Sheriff's Department provides security service in Folsom School District? And just a couple of weeks ago, I raised the question regarding additional, um, what was the contract, $1.4 million for outside contract uh, security. Um, and then we can provide, I'm not objecting to it, it's just trying to figure out how they can provide services at Folsom School District. So when we raised the question, at least when I raised the question regarding outside security, at one point we could do $1.4 million, whatever the dollar amount was. I'm just a little confused. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the confusion is. The, the contract that you saw was one point, was roughly 1.3 or 1.2. Is is uh, a two-year contract. Th this here is is the sheriff has gone to all the school districts to say if you want security in your schools, you got to pay for it. So the school districts are paying and paying a lot of money for class three officers. I'm not questioning the legality of it. I'm questioning if the sheriff's department said they could not do the security that we put out the contract for 1.4, but you can go into the schools yes. and then you tell the schools that you have to pay the sheriff's department to provide, yeah. I believe you said class 3 officers, right? Class 3, yeah. We were paying too. We paid 1.4 for four mm -hmm. armed guards and the rest of them, as they were called, rental cops. We, we pay just so you know, we, we roughly it's six hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year. Okay. We we do ten, twelve buildings. Th this contract alone includes a car, all the benefits and well not the benefits because they don't I don't think they get benefits but but, but, but their salary. So my point to you is is it's very expensive. I, I'm saying to you. This one officer probably is going to cost, with the car and everything, and gas and everything, well over $100,000. We're only paying six sixty for, you know, like uh, probably on average at 28 different security guards. 
benefits from the same, right? We would get six. At this rate, we would get like six. We're getting 28. Um, that's, that's the distinction. Okay. Uh, one more question. Sure. So with, with, with that information, right. other than the force of school district, what, what other district? Is there a um, Is that yeah. Special services. Special services. <coughs> well, yeah, I, I did give you about it the other day. I thought I was that I was sticking up in place. I thought you were in Hamilton. I was close enough in Hamilton Township. But, um, hey, hey, yo. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I, I wasn't sure exactly, other than, and, and, and right. you're right, I did see it at um, ACIT when I was there. So that's yeah. the only two that have class threes from the Sheriff's Department? Well, they negotiated others. I don't think they finalized all the negotiations. So Fawcett McGree, well, they, they, they've had to. They've had to. BCIT and SST for a number of uh, special services for a number of years. So maybe Cedar yeah. Creek would be the next one, and Oak Crest would be the other one. I'm not sure. I think they'd be open to a better one. Free order It's better to be safe than so I'm mm -hmm. Joe, you just, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure of this, I'm asking the question. These are contracts negotiated with a school district and the sheriff's department. That's this right. is in a county contract, right? The county, the county is a party to the contract because what happens is, is we, we have to budget the money for them in order in order for them to operate, and then we get reimbursed. From the contract. Well, I'm just saying they, it is the expenditure, is it the decision of the school district? Oh, oh, absolutely, that's, yes, that's absolutely. Not, it's not initiated by the administration. No, not initiated by the administration, no. but we fronted. Well, you know, money. Yeah, yeah. At some point, yeah. 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 Okay. Comments on the public? Oh. <coughs> Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Bisley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 388. Intergovernmental agreement with the Weymouth Township, City of Pleasantville, Hamilton Township, City of Northfield, City of Ank Harbor, and Univista Township concerning installation and maintenance of flashing signal equipment at various locations, no cost. Motion. Second. Motion and second. Your order comments on that one? Comments from the public, roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Vermica? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. 389. Intergovernmental agreement with the City of Port Republic regarding surface forced mill and overlay improvements of portions of Mill Street and Port Republic in conjunction with the county's plan improvements <coughs> to PR07, the Cote Creek Bridge, amount not to exceed $140,000. Motion and second. Free order comments on that one. Comments from the public? Roll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Vermica? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. And Jim, free you move the agenda. Free order, Corsi. I agree you to uh, Jerry. Jerry, can we get an update on the uh, Port Bridge at some point in time? Yes. Um, I did a ride through not too long ago. And, yes. I mean, I'm not saying they have a standstill, but. Uh, it's closed off where we are. Yes. Maybe for next agenda you could do Port Bridge and Cotton Mill Bridge since there's I'll, I'll, things I'll happening. I'll bring the engineer to, to, to go through the, the, the difficulties we've had with Port Republic because there's we had we've had uh, issues there with the, uh, the residents who, who live on either side of the of the bridge on the port side. <coughs> okay. So next agenda. Yes. Jerry, thanks. Okay. Three ninety. Submission of the Atlantic County Fiscal Year 2019 Annual Action Plan to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for the Community Development Block Grant Program and the Home Investment Partnership Program in the amount of $1,887,756. Second. Motion and second. Real comments? Comments from the public? Full public? Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Kern? Yes. Bisley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. Uh, 391 92 roadway solicitations together. Move. Second. Motion is second. Three order comments on either of them. Comments from the public. We'll call vote. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Vermica? Yes. Kern? Yes. Bisley? Yes. And Gatto? Yes. Okay, that concludes the written portion of our agenda. We'll go on to reports of special committees of the board. Anybody have any reports? Yes, to board Risley. Yeah, thank you, Chair. We uh, did attend uh, again the South Jersey Economic Development District meeting last night at the Cumberland County College, and uh, we're, uh, we're doing well. The district is uh, 
really on a sound, you know, very sound financial footing. Um, you know, we did a lot to make the aviation part of the reality. And I funded the money to the other three counties. So the, the district is, as you know, is a four county uh, project, and the district is being run very effectively. And uh, we've been receiving some planning grants as well. So we're doing it very, very well and, uh, under the direction of Lou Joyce. We are now truly meeting only quarterly. Uh, it's come a long, long way and uh, there's a lot going on, of course, in the other three counties. So when you attend those meetings, it's not just about Medicare. It's about travel and sale and maintenance. There's a lot going on there. And we're doing, as Howard mentioned, uh, <coughs> things jointly with Cape May County with their UAS program and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of things going on, a lot of positive things going on. We're waiting back for a study to be done on the impact of the closing of uh, nuclear power plants, other power plants, uh, feasibility study about what the impact will be for our area of that. We're waiting on that. Uh, so it's moving along quite successfully and able to pay our bills and things are looking good. Okay. Another topic, you know, a while back something that Matthew was here of course to ask us about the uh, countywide assessment program and was asking us what the cost would be. And we need to get back to him as we should. Um, we'll be having a meeting Mention this date now to see if it works for the committee. Uh, so, uh, Wednesday, July the 10th. That uh, works for you at 4 30. right here. Wednesday, July the 10th. Are you sure? What's the problem? Date of the time? Let's, let's work on that after the meeting. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Check with your chief of staff. Madam Clerk, she told me to check with my chief of staff. He's asked us to get the information. I, don't, I know. And we're going to meet with the Board of Taxation of people that know, people that know this stuff, because this is going to be quite a daunting task. It's going to be a daunting pony show, because at the end of the day, John, all due respect, yeah. if the Board of Taxation has the information, they just need to get, I don't need to come sit at a meeting and listen to the same stuff that they've been telling. If they have the information, John, what we just get it. There's a lot more than just that. It's okay. not a matter of... You know what, John, let me rephrase that. And there's a number of paper clips. John, let, well, you're right. But this has been kicking down the road for a long time. Yes, it right? has. Yes. At the end of the day, I think what we may need to consider... Okay. Let's find out, one, for Matthew, what is he asking us? And then we can have the Board of Taxation give us that information. I don't want to sit here for two or three hours listening to the same time. If he gives us a punch list, we should be able to get that from him. Uh -huh. That's just a suggestion. Because I know how you like to sit here and go to those numbers. Because the numbers don't lie, people do. And so at the end of the day, um, I don't want to keep spinning our wheels back and forth, going and on and on and on, kicking it down the road for football. I'm not interested. I mean, to be frank, I, I asked for that specific punch you know, list of you know, what he wanted specifically at that last committee meeting. Like, you know, I, I totally it. agree with you. Tell us specifically what you need. And that's uh, yeah. If we get the same we need we need to find out what it is. All right. I, I agree. I, we I went through that already. Yeah. I agree. But I need the taxation right. people to keep telling us the same thing. They know what they're talking about. There's just a lot of pieces to this puzzle. Oh, yes. A whole lot of pieces. Okay. The present situation, the current situation, the ongoing situation, and of course you have the big unknown down the road once the pilot program disappears. So there's a whole lot of moving parts to this thing. Okay. 
So anything else? Well, we will wait until he responds to us. No, no, no. The question was, did we ask them? Yeah, I know we asked in our original meeting. He sat here and asked us. And we told him. Okay, so I don't want to get into a back and forth on this. <clears throat> uh, we, we, have, we have minutes. I do think there was some lack of clarity on exactly what he needed number-wise. I think we go back and ask him for that list, and then we'll take it from there and see if we actually need the meeting or if we can get it from the Board of Taxation or um, however we want to move forward there. Um, Oh. Madam Chair, don't disrespect. I don't have a problem with that. I just want to get the board either. taxation the same stuff we already heard. I, if, in fact, he hadn't given us the list that he's asking for, why would we meet? I don't think we can do that. Yeah, I don't think we can do that. Okay. 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 Ok
uh, this is the goal of the discussion. But a motion of this sort probably should be drafted with some time and thought rather than trying to make it up as we're going along right now. We really haven't gotten much in the way of the specific for what this letter contents. I think free water for me could be filled with buckets that need to be in there. So um, I would think that we should have some I'm assuming, Sonia, you're going to draft the letter and you'll be able to listen back and get those buckets. Okay. Or call in. Send or call in. Right? Yeah, send it, send it to the committee for final comment on it. Or uh, I'm a little confused. I, I, but we just got an opinion from our solicitor, so you're going to basically tell the solicitor your opinion doesn't matter. Just I'm not draft saying that. All I'm saying That's what it sounds like you said. That is not what I'm lead. saying at all, Freeholder. Yeah, but what I'm is, saying it is I'm well, trying well, well, to not well, delay well, well, a letter well, well, being written for two more weeks. I understand that, but the question I made was, I asked Rocky, was he good with that information? He then gave us his response. Correct. Basically saying, we should not rush to do this. And you basically said, Sonia, you can go ahead and do the letter anyway. I was asking. I didn't say go ahead. I said, said would you be able to draft the letter using his talking points, his talking points which are recorded? I'm going to go to my attorney's uh, OK. I do have a problem. I'd like to that. I, I, I think that. Uh, I think there's a bit of a rush here to get into this more specific aspect of what the questions to Masio and the and vice versa. And I think that ought to be given some consideration by the committee. We, we've waited a long time to get to this point. We're waiting for the next meeting so that we have something to present to the board. There's not going to be a great wait. It's going to be bigger for much considering the outcome. Well, and, and, and second off, if I may, yeah. there's no rush to judgment. They're in recess. It ain't like they're going back to a committee meeting to do a rope vote. Right? And then the second part to that is, Madam Chair, all due respect, um, you, you got to be careful sometimes what you put in writing because it can come back and bite you in your behind. So, and the reason I said I, 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 I err on the side of the attorney, I agree there's no rush to it. I mean, we all know it's political season. I get it. But we're going to get it right if we should get it right if that's what we intend to do. Um, and like I told you before, let's not make this a political football, but let's try to get it right. And rushing the judgment doesn't get it right. I, I thought somebody just said this was taking too long, and so that's why I was trying to avoid another two weeks. It's going to kill you if you've been waiting four years for the former chairman. All right. That's his comment. So four we have years. a motion and a second on the table. Are we rescinding that, or are we moving forward with that vote? We can modify it for the amendment. Modify it with an amendment that's of what? Makes it more specific. I, I, frankly, I, I don't even know what the motion was. Okay. The motion was loose on so many different ends. It's hard to say that it is uh, decisively guiding us in any direction. Okay. I understood it to be that we draft a letter that goes to Mazio asking him what specific data points he was looking for. In the answers. buckets that free water for Mika went down, it was about four or five to Well, okay, I didn't hear it that way, but okay. uh, if that's if that's the way that it should be fashioned, then you should be specific in the motion so that that's what you actually accomplish. Okay. But for the most part, the board of free quarters acts by the way of the resolution. Right. We are a legislator, we're not a letter writer. It possibly you might even want to consider putting this in the form of a resolution do that by having those interested parties get together, perhaps in the committee, and directing the resolution. To send a letter. Well, you don't need to send a letter to that resolution. What, you have a motion and a second on the table. Can you guys tell me what you guys want to do? I like the resolution. Okay. But he's got to withdraw the motion. Somebody's got to withdraw the motion. I'll withdraw my motion. You withdraw your second? Withdraw the second. Okay. So we take no action. Well, no, 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 I'm saying once it's withdrawn, then there's a withdrawn the second. You're consensus to the members of the community and to the members of the community. So, yeah, I'm going to get together the fashion of the first Right. Yeah. 
No, I, I, I meant once we had the motion rescinded and the second rescinded, that was done, right? We have no other. Okay. 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 So, the, so, so, let, oh, okay. so then the committee then will meet to talk about this resolution and the topic. I'll be there. there. That was easy. <laughs> All right. Do you have any other reports of special committees for your order, Resley? All right. Any other reports of special committees? Okay. Unfinished business. Seeing none. New business. Seeing none. Written communications and petitions. Seeing none. We'll open it up to the public for comment. Any public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public portion. Go to the order. Go to the order. Free order for me. You guys stand up. Uh, All right. Thank you. Uh, I just, I just want to say that uh, as I go through the meetings here, I reflect on this kids count, and I reflect on Atlanta County's efforts to improve the quality of life especially in this administration's free free order board. Today's agenda had 26 resolutions. Nine of those resolutions dealt with workforce investment board, getting youth to get jobs, education, specifically with the one stop. Nine of the 26 resolutions. The expenditure, even with the reduced amounts, of $6.9 million. And I can tell you, during the course of the year, this county accepts grants and administers, usually on an average, correct me if I'm wrong, Bonnie, 11 to 14 million to get our workforce that is unemployed into jobs. So I want everybody and the cameras to keep that in mind, that it's not for lack of effort or putting our money into the res human resources we have in this county. That's all I got to say. Okay, thank you. Any other? Go to the order. Yeah, I'm Vice Chair, I'm just going to add to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do. I'm getting used to that. Well, I was just going to add on to uh, Creole for me to statement because there's many times the people I work with that had people within their family, people that they knew that weren't aware of some of the programs, as much as we get it out there, we see them in the newspaper, there's people that aren't aware. So it's important for all of us to continue to put that out there. And I know a number of them that were just so thankful for just uh, to have you know their youth put into these programs. Yeah. I just, I just have one. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm Wait. sorry. I'm used to this. He used to being last. Yes. yes. Is this an addition? Is this yes. part of this conversation? Yes. Okay, then it's still allowed. Okay. okay. So um, I, I just was, the, the things we voted on today had, didn't have anything to do with kids now, right? They were workforce development. No, they didn't. Okay. Because if we're, we stand with kids count is not a good thing. And right? we have spent, we spent a lot of money in those efforts through our family center. But so yes, I shouldn't have said kids count. I would say the overall condition of Atlanta County, because of our downturn economy, makes us would, would, it, would it give the impression that we do not make efforts toward the unemployed, toward the unemployed, you know, uh, single parent, toward getting people into jobs, which goes to the socioeconomic reasons why kids count is so bad. So by, by extension, it definitely affects the quality of life. But I am sure that we can find resolutions that show where our family health and human services reach out to teenage mothers, reach out to addicted people. It's, I just want to point out every time this board has resolutions that make efforts toward that, I just wanted to underscore that. Okay. Oh, we didn't even mention the 73 people who graduated from the recovery court who also were all of them full time employees as a result of all of our programs that we have. As well. Just one of the things she mentioned, Ms. Chair, is the, uh, is the fact that. Um, one of the key elements of uh, kids count is your median income. Median income in Lane County is roughly 55, 56,000, which is roughly 30,000 less than the state of New Jersey. The state average. And that's, and that's one, of the, one of the reasons, if you look at the South Jersey, median incomes are much less than, than the North and Central. 
And then the other issue about, well, it's not part of the kids' cap directly. The, the key to raising your salaries are, are getting jobs and creation of jobs, stuff that Howard's doing, you know, on economic development, ACEA, or and more. Those are the kinds of things you, yeah. you really need because that will raise, you know, the, le the level of income, which, which then gives you a better opportunity to access doctors, you know, th those kinds of issues, and not have to be on welfare, right? yeah. or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Freeholder Corsi, the floor is yours. Well, I'm going to take it in. Okay. This reserve the balance of my time. Okay. A couple of things about Joe. Sure. This is, uh, this is, uh, uh, if we want to still be open to the and uh, we can get something accomplished. Uh, two is, let me be very, very clear. I was not questioning the modality of our clerk, because she is very capable of doing a letter or anything else. But that's why we made an attorney give us legal advice that we need to go. That's the reason um, I think you need to uh, make sure we get clarification from the attorney and then um, you know, ultimately uh, our clerk make sure we get the necessary information we need. <coughs> Second thing is, uh, Phil Rizzo, you mentioned that you were at a meeting yesterday uh, on the that you was at the uh, Cumberland County College. Mm -hmm. If I know, uh, maybe I've read that it's been changed over to Rome and South Jersey. Uh, Southern Jersey. Because uh, um, Lawson and Cumberland has merged. And uh, I just had to have the opportunity to go yesterday. Because my wife was re sworn in for the third time this year uh, to board of trustees. So you got to sworn in in one year, one I've done in my whole career. I hope you take her out to dinner after every meal. Well, I did. Okay. Good. We went to Panera. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but anyway, it was it was interesting to uh, to see that merger because what Boston County and Cumberland County merges on the yeah. Rowan University. Um, I mean, it's not going to be here around here, but um, it's it's interesting to see the amount of money that's going to be uh, floating between between the two colleges, and um, I just want to put Lenny K Community College, one of the Stockton um, folks take advantage of uh, getting into uh, college. I'm a little disappointed with our state uh, legislators where they did not increase the dollar amount uh, for free college. Um, we all know the political <coughs> arena. It's enough money to go around for everybody, but I think that uh, most folks who get the $45,000 already qualify anyway. Uh, we're trying to get other additional people to uh, take advantage of it. So, yeah. Uh, <coughs> but, uh, I just want to make those couple comments. Uh, I don't know if I think I'm slightly hurt, but she's more than qualified. Before we go to the order, <coughs> we got to change these batteries because they can't put the air conditioner on high speed. <laughs> <laughs> and that clock is a minute slow. we got to fix that. It's a drop in the Any other uh, good of the owner over here? Freeholder Bennett? Everybody have there to say and happy and good and Yes, yes I, I agree. I, I also just wanted to give a shout out to Atlantic City uh, for two things. Number one, they did a great job with the branding of North Beach um, and the energy that's happening down there. With the casinos working together, the local business owners working together there, I think it's just another feather in our cap um, in Atlantic City, Atlantic County. And then also on the Warp Tour, uh, it was the 25th uh, anniversary and final. A warp tour um, that brought a lot of people to this county. This You're weekend. the only person young enough to know what that is. In yeah, this room, it's so. a rock concert. <laughs> all right, it was, it was a rock festival actually, multi-year, uh, multi-day uh, festival. And lucky for us, it rained in the middle of it, so they had to evacuate the beach, and everybody had to go onto the boardwalk or into a casino to take cover for about an hour or so. And then they all came back out, so it really benefited our businesses for that little bit of rain. And uh, I think it was handled extremely well. Um, the concert organizers are closing up shop on it, but I think it would behoove us, uh, you know, hopefully with the CRDA, uh, to create something of that nature uh, in Atlantic City to make it a, a place that people want to come and have to come to continue to have a festival like that that only exists there uh, in the country. And, uh, it brought young people here, so um, they did a great job. I read yeah. people that were from Michigan. Yeah, Always all Michigan. over. Yeah. Um, they only had three stops on this tour. We Unbelievable. Were, yeah, 
So it was really great for us. Uh, and it, and it, it got national attention. So I think that's the other really important thing. And then uh, Unico is having their person of the year dinner on uh, July 12th. If anybody's interested, just want to give a shout out there. Um, and then other than that, I echo, echo your sentiments. Reholder Bennett, wishing everybody a very happy and safe, safe 4th of July, happy independence, celebrate the birthday of America. Did, did everybody get the memo that the holiday, the 4th of July party is at Frank's house? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bring your own, bring your own food. Four bucks. <laughs> but that'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed?